An alliance of environmental groups pounced on the opportunity of a by-election in Heathcote to release a proposal for the extension of the Royal National Park, adding another 2,000 hectares to Australia's original national reserve. The planned extension links the park to the Illawarra Escarpment and the Nora Water Catchment Reserve. The conservation groups claim about half the rainforest and tall hardwood forest of the Hacking Valley are outside the existing park. They say those areas are essential for wildlife, but the increasing development in Helensburg and nearby villages is putting them at risk. The proposal attacks plans such as a hotel on the top of Bald Hill, a concrete batching plant for Helensburg and the introduction of sand mining in the area. The conservation groups believe the developments will destroy the green belt between Wollongong and Sydney. They say the ALP, and in particular Rex Jackson, have attempted to bulldoze through the plans to urbanise the Helensburg area, despite having only 14% approval of the residents. Rex Jackson's resignation has forced the by-election. The announcement by the conservation groups is another nail in the coffin for the government. Labor is still smarting at its poor showing in Bass Hill and Rockdale, and any glimmer of hope for success in Heathcote is now virtually extinguished last night with its plans for the development of the suburb. Any hostilities were avoided when Council explained its proposal in detail. Last night's meeting held here in the community centre was the first forum since the report was released. In the past, Helensburg residents have complained about a lack of common public facilities, but the general feeling is that the way the suburb is regarded is about to change. And I think we should take those changes. We, nobody can sit still. We should uh, move ahead. Uh, but we want to do it in a controlled manner. We don't want, uh, for example, another Menai or some of these other areas where a development's gone forward without due consideration for all the other constraints. Helensburg is in the unfortunate position of being on the outskirts of Sydney and Wollongong. The Helensburg Progress Association believes that's one reason why the area has been ignored, resulting in poor public services and bad roads. But with development, the residents feel that is bound to change, although the long-awaited high school may have to be abandoned if places are still available for students at Bulleye and Heathcote. The Progress Association says it supports development and also backs a further more detailed investigation by Wollongong City Council. If they adopted the one that uh, drops the study completely, I think we'll still be in a no-man's land. Uh, I think really we should, uh, at this point in time, stop and just identify all the uh, matters affecting Helensburg so people in Helensburg and outside of Helensburg can make their various arrangements. The study will remain on public exhibition for at least another fortnight in the Helensburg Community Centre and the Library. A council officer is available to answer further questions and an assessment of public submissions will be made towards the end of the month to determine the next step council will make. All over the place to cloud the issue. The Greenies, as expected, couldn't keep out of it and have fielded their own candidate to try to force conservation down everyone's throat as the main issue, which in Heathcote, it is not by any means. And this election is far too important to have single-issue parties yapping around on the sidelines. It's to be hoped the voters of Heathcote will ignore them and concentrate on the main issue, which is who will lead the New South Wales government over the next couple of years and into the next election. Because my understanding is that Mr Unsworth has now agreed with the party machine that if he can't carry Heathcote, he will step aside. I am also told that his successor could well be the Environment Minister, Bob Carr. Now that, in turn, would cause problems for the federal government, which has been looking to Mr Carr to take over the federal seat of Kingsford Smith in the event of the retirement this year of the Federal Attorney General, Lionel Bowen. So, you see, a great deal hangs on Heathcote. Labor will have trouble winning it again in the present environment, a Labor defeat, apart from giving the coalition great heart, will have repercussions right through politics. By-elections are a good chance to give a government a slap on the wrist and a fertile field for silly one-issue parties to peddle their obsessive wares. This by-election should ideally be left to the two main parties and if you're voting in Heathcote, you ought to vote as you would vote in a state or federal election because that, in effect, will be exactly what you'll be doing. This is John Tingle. Coming Heathcote by-election claims the major parties must address environmental and other local issues if they're to fight an effective campaign. Horticulturalist Jim Powell will run as an independent and describes his main ideals as community and conservation. 
Jim Powell isn't worried by the label of greenie, but says his campaign will be fought on many different issues, not just conservation. However, he says there are several major environmental factors in Heathcote both the government and opposition have failed to address, including the future of the Royal National Park, which he says is in danger of destruction, and the fate of the escarpment at the hands of developers. Mr Powell says he's not opposed to all development in the electorate, but the village lifestyle which has prevailed for many years in areas such as Stanwell Park must be preserved. We're not making that a major issue in the sense of uh, that everything has to be just stopped. We, we've just, as I've just said, we're concerned with uh, the tourist industry, light industrial areas, that we just don't want to see everything come to a standstill and nothing take place. We believe there is compromise, small development with protection as it goes is quite satisfactory. Mr Powell says as well as the issue of the environment, the voters of Heathcote will choose their next representative on the basis of problems such as education, public transport and roads. And he says recent events in state politics will only serve to give the independent candidates a better chance. With the Bass Hill, Rockdale and Pitwater by-elections amounting to statements of protest against both major parties, he says Heathcote may well be within his grasp. We put ourselves in exactly that same position that we believe we are now a major party and the issue is concerned that we would expect to be up with the, the top. District Protection Society is standing firm in its opposition to a planned concrete batching plant to be built in the area. The society claims Bain's Concrete Company is sidestepping the necessary environmental impact study which could result in devastating pollution damage to a tributary of the protected Hacking River. Bain's Concrete Company has been planning a batching plant on the Lawrence Hardgrave Drive since 1985, but Wollongong Council says they won't approve the site until Bain's carries out an environmental impact study. Bain's claims the site's production capacity is less than 20,000 tonnes a year and therefore doesn't require an EIS, but members of the Helensburg District Protection Society dispute this statement. The Environmental Planning Assessment Act states that any plant with the capacity to produce in excess of 20,000 tonnes of concrete per annum will in fact require an environmental impact statement. It is classed as a designated development. Mr Donoghue says the Protection Society is not against the development of the site, but it believes the company is trying to circumvent what it says is a legal requirement. The Protection Society also believes no controls will be enforced to ensure Bain's production doesn't exceed its estimated maximum. It also holds reservations about the development due to its proximity to Gills Creek, a tributary of the protected Hacking River. We believe that the, in the case of an accident or spilt lime, spilt cement, dust, will in fact contaminate, pollute the water. Uh, that's our basic objection on, on environmental issues. The council has received notice from the National Parks and Wildlife Service stating it objects altogether to the siting of the batching plant on these grounds. Baines has asked the council to revoke its decision calling for the EIS and has submitted an appeal to the Land and Environment Court to have the request withdrawn. The case will be heard next Tuesday. According to the Protection Society, Baines is refusing to supply the EIS because of an exemption granted to a Port Macquarie company in 1984, but the Society claims it has no relevance. On our legal advice, that does not apply to this plant whatsoever. It was a unique decision and most certainly we will take it to court. Dave Davids from Baines showed us over the site but said the company was unavailable for comment until Monday. Fiona Clark, Win News should go ahead despite claims from some members of the ALP that the plan is too environmental. The rezoning proposal has caused some controversy amongst those wanting Helensburg to expand who claim the town will be ringed in by an environmental belt and those who say the area needs more protection. The issue went to a special meeting of Wollongong Council last Wednesday and was deferred pending a further report tomorrow night. But today, the Shadow Minister called on Council to go through with the rezoning. We believe that the largely untouched bushland areas, including the old historical subdivisions, should remain as bushland areas. 
there is plenty of scope for increasing the density in Helensburg within the existing town perimeter. And we believe that that, in the long term, is the way things should go. Mr Moore claims to have seen a letter to members of the ALP's Helensburg branch, which claims the rezoning is too environmental. But he says the new classification is necessary to protect the upper catchment area of the Hacking River and reduce the degradation of downstream bushland surrounding Helensburg. According to Mr Moore, there is a way of balancing development and protection. I understand that there are a hundred new houses a year being built in Helensburg at the moment as part of the infill development that is going on, that that is continuing apace. I believe that that is the responsible way that will allow Helensburg to grow, provide it with the additional social and other facilities that will flow from that without degrading the environment. And Alan Andrews and I are concerned that that balance occurs. The the Hacking River, but some residents awaiting a decision have found themselves still unable to build on their land. The new 7H environmental protection zoning applies to the area surrounding Helensburg, except for the catchment of Camp and Gills Creeks. Investigation of suitable urban development will be carried out in stage two of the local environmental plan. While the environmental lobby will no doubt support the new classification for much of the area surrounding the Hacking River, the decision has left some residents still unable to build on their land. The people are terribly upset. I can quite understand their, their reaction. I would be too. Uh, unfortunately, however, Council has no legal ability to not charge rates on land that, that is held in private ownership. And even though they can derive no benefit from this land, we have no ability to do anything about it. A state government zoning decision in 1971 required each development lot to be at least 10 hectares. The state government at some point or other uh, raised the size of the lot which you need to build a house on and these people have been left stranded. Uh, the council will be approaching the state government with a view to th that their properties be compulsorily acquired so that they can be relieved of their problem. Alderman Pickford said a promise to acquire the affected land was made during Labor's campaign for the Heathcote by-election. He says he's confident the Department of Environment and Planning will honour the pledge. Mary Franks, Win News. Good evening. There's concern over the health of State Housing Minister Joe Ship after he collapsed during a visit to Helensburg today. The drama took place at the end of an inspection of proposed housing areas in the Helensburg area. Mr Ship was on a tour of Helensburg with ministerial colleagues Tim Moore and David Hay when he collapsed at the side of a roadway midway through a radio interview. His aides rushed for assistance from nearby households while the media and other parliamentarians did what they could to comfort the minister. Mr Ship's office says he's been on medication for several days after complaining of back spasms. 2 00 reporter Peter Andrea was speaking with the housing minister when he realised something was wrong. I had my microphone and I dropped it and uh, I grabbed him in the arm and he just gave way and so we've laid him down there and he looks to be doing okay now. Pale and obviously shaken, Mr Ship managed to regain his feet and was whisked back to Sydney before receiving medical treatment. Speaking from his home this afternoon, he said he'd felt dizzy while standing in the sun but would be back at work tomorrow morning. The drama cut short a visit to Helensburg by the three ministers who were looking at an area earmarked for 1,500 extra building blocks. Mr Moore says despite the current housing crisis, the state government won't be tempted to rush through the new land release areas just south of the town. There's no quick starts to this. What we are looking at is a proper environmental process, a proper planning process. We are not going to allow anything to happen here that will damage the Hacking River Royal National Park or the Garawarra State Recreation Area. The new housing estates will more than double the present population of Helensburg, but it could be another decade before the land is fully developed. We are looking uh, at uh, something that's not going to happen overnight. Uh, there's a lot of work to be done before there's uh, something to be seen, but the potential of this area obviously is enormous. With the average price of a block of land in Sydney skyrocketing to over $100,000, the prospect of a big new land release at Helensburg is sure to be welcomed. It's one of the few areas left in the, in the close uh, areas of Sydney where land is reasonably cheap. I mean, no land's cheap anymore, unfortunately, but it's reasonably cheap in comparison to other areas. Jeremy Lassick, Win News. Royal National Park.
The decrease in water quality of the Hacking River has been well documented over the last decade. What was once a picturesque waterway now has extensive siltation and algae problems and bacteria levels that make swimming unsafe in some areas. The State Pollution Control Commission was asked to set up a total catchment management committee to investigate the hacking's problems and make recommendations about its future. Two years on, that committee's report is about to be released. We looked at things like um, soil erosion from uh, construction activities. We looked at uh, sewerage disposal there, uh, garbage disposal, feral animals in the, uh, in the park, uh, weeds. Many of the problems stem from urban expansion in the towns of Helensburg and Otford, which lie in the river's upper catchment. And the Commission has been looking closely at the growth of those areas and the effects of stormwater on the hacking system. But the committee, comprising government departments, councils and community groups, doesn't believe the damage is beyond repair. By changes to some of the management practices within the catchment, uh, I think it is possible to reverse some of these uh, problems that we've got. The report will be released at a public seminar next Wednesday morning at the Helensburg Workmen's Club. Neryl Fry, Win News. Recommended tight controls on future urban expansion in the Helensburg area. The government says it will act quickly to implement many of the recommendations, but the report has already been labelled a toothless tiger by environmentalists. The report deals specifically with the question of how to stop the steady deterioration of the Hacking River and its surrounding environment in the Royal National Park, but that directly affects future expansion of Helensburg in the river's catchment. The lengthy document was today presented to the public at a seminar at Helensburg. Its many recommendations include requirements for strict stormwater pollution controls on any urban development and that expansion be limited to those areas around Helensburg which are already substantially developed. The report was fully endorsed by Environment Minister Tim Moore, who says many of its recommendations can be implemented without legislative change. We're not going to permit development that is going to degrade the environment. The Council is doing a detailed study on that at the moment and that will be released for public discussion, I think, in mid-May. But Mr Moore's stand has been criticised by two environmental groups, the Friends of the Hacking River and the Helensburg District Protection Society. Both were represented on the committee which produced the report, but they say that was before they were aware the government was looking at a major land release in the Helensburg area. When you find the Department of Planning, David Hayes' department, proposing or investigating urban expansion around East Heathcote into what was formerly Royal National Park, then you must, as a community, out be outraged by this. They say the report has established that even with tight controls, development of new areas would significantly affect the hacking's water quality. Conservationists are predicting a long-running battle to stop massive urbanisation of the Helensburg area. The fight is expected to start next week when Wollongong City Council will release the 200-page Helensburg Urban Expansion Study. The on-again, off-again Helensburg Local Environmental Study was completed earlier this month after more than a decade in the planning. Wollongong aldermen will receive the first copies over the weekend. Many see it as the most important study ever undertaken by Council's planning department. Included in it is a proposal to allow up to 2,000 new homes and possibly 40 hectares of light industrial land to be established around the town. It's going to be the biggest thing that's ever happened in Helensburg and it's going to be very significant because quite obviously the community split. Uh, I wouldn't like to suggest which way it's split or the percentage but You've certainly got a very pro-development group and you've got a very strong that any development there could further damage the uh, national park, the natural catchment areas and uh, it's a very, very sensitive area. Environmentalists are about to fire the first shots in their campaign. They say massive urban expansion, which will effectively double the size of Helensburg, will put at risk the extremely sensitive Hacking River and the Royal National Park, which now acts as a green belt between Sydney and Wollongong. I think the pressure mainly is coming from developers rather than from um, the problem of availability of land. Um, there are better sites for urban expansion to service South Sydney demand than Helen. Protection Society, which claims the expansion of the town will destroy sensitive flora and fauna.
Wollongong City Council's draft Helensburg plan looks at an area from Stanwell Tops in the south to Wilson's Creek in the north. This land was then broken down into two smaller areas capable of urban development, the Camp Creek and Gills Creek catchments. In the Gills Creek region, the report suggests the establishment of a housing subdivision and an industrial estate. The 40 hectares of industrial land will be reserved for light industries. The report says Gills Creek also can support residential development of between 1,000 and 1,100 blocks of land. In the Camp Creek area, the report suggests 500 to 800 residential lots could be created. Before both areas can be developed, two retention ponds are needed to control urban pollution from running into the Hacking River. We're told that um, the best retention basins are on Lake Billy Griffin, and yet Lake Billy Griffin at the moment is filthy. Are the retention basins in the Helensburg report adequate? I believe they're just token pollution controls. One of the issues which was not identified in this is the, um, the drainage of Herbert Creek into this retention pond. Uh, Herbert Creek passes through some fairly pristine rainforest area. Uh, it means that that will no longer be the same. Environmentalists claim the expansion of Helensburg would severely damage sensitive fauna and flora. Well, one rainforest will be totally bulldozed for housing. Um, another one will be accepting polluted water, whereas it's relatively clean now. The Helensburg study will go on public exhibition for the next three months before Council decides to rezone the land. Culmination of almost 10 years of work was due to go on public exhibition in the next few weeks, but the City Council has vetoed that plan to conduct further investigations. The 200-page Wollongong City Council Helensburg study identified two areas between Stanwell Tops in the south and Wilson's Creek in the north which had the potential for urban development. The report found the Gills Creek catchment represented by the Blue and the Camp Creek area in the Mauve could support residential development and a 50-hectare light industrial estate. However, it recommended retention ponds would need to be established to control surface runoff from contaminating the Hacking River. Concern over the pollution ponds and their location has prompted council to defer public exhibition of the study pending further reports on the matter. Again, yes, once again, and this time indefinitely. But the uncertainty leaves us in an awkward position. Um, a lot of the local chamber members wish to spend money on their businesses but uh, are more than reluctant to do so. And uh, the excuses given by local government um, aren't accepted by us. The Chamber of Commerce says Helensburg is crying out for development and the new money that would come with it would lift the image and appearance of the town. The town centre can be updated and we all agree that it needs to be, but the money's got to come from somewhere and uh, we can only think that if development takes place, um, the developers would be happy to spend some money locally to update what we have already. On Sunday, a public meeting is being held at the Helensburg Workers' Club to campaign for council to speed up its decisions in an area often described as Wollongong's forgotten suburb. We've been here for a long time, Helensburg, and uh, we've been trying to get things organised for a long time, and we usually get the last to get anything done. More than 200 Helensburg residents attended the meeting, which was called by the Chamber of Commerce to assess the public's attitude to the draft Helensburg study. The long-awaited study is the culmination of 10 years of work and was to go on public exhibition in the next few weeks. However, Wollongong Council decided not to make the study public following concerns over the location and effectiveness of two pollution control ponds. I think it should be on exhibit so that people can make comment and if the council can't make the decision to put it on exhibit, um, they should call for more expert help and uh, we'd be lobbying the state government to provide that help. The draft study which recommends the establishment of a light industrial estate and the creation of more than 1,100 residential lots in the Gills Creek catchment has divided the town. Although not opposed to the industrial estate, the Helensburg Protection Society has objected to the development of land east of Walker Street. The worst possible situation is that development of that land and increasing the possibility of not having a national Ah. Public exhibition. The plan is a culmination of 10 years of work by Wollongong City Council and will be on display for three months, but it's already under fire.
The study was officially placed on exhibition during a ceremony at the Helensburg Community Centre. The plan was due to go on display last year. However, Council was forced to reverse its decision after the National Parks and Wildlife Service failed to provide vital information about stormwater pollution control ponds proposed for the Garawara State Recreation Area. The second reason that it was delayed was that uh, the New South Wales Department of Planning refused to give its formal certification uh, to place the plan on public exhibition. The plan, which is on exhibition at the Helensburg Library and Community Centre, recommends the rezoning of around 110 hectares of land south of the town in the Gills Creek catchment to allow the establishment of up to 1,300 residential blocks. It also recommends the creation of a 40 hectare light industrial estate. There is need for more accommodation in this area. Uh, nearly all the blocks are built on, there's still a few yet to go, but there is need of course for further development in Hellensburg. While the Gills Creek area has been identified by the study as ideal for future urban expansion, residential development in the Camp Creek catchment northeast of the town is not expected to occur until the pollution control ponds proposed for the area are approved by the National Parks and Wildlife Service. Although the plan is expected to overcome Helensburg's shortage of residential land, environmentalists claim it will have a dramatic effect on the sensitive Royal National Park. Australia's first national park is already under a large amount of environmental stress and any further development in the Hacking River catchment will further degrade the water quality of the Hacking River and could potentially threaten uh, many uh, already stressed species in the area. A series of public meetings will be staged during the next three months to give residents the opportunity to comment on the controversial proposal. Heath Cooper, Win you. The, the state government is under pressure from all sides to take a closer interest in the future of Helensburg. Proposals to expand residential and light industrial areas in the township came under the microscope last night in the first of a series of public meetings. It was the first chance local residents have had to question the thinking behind the draft plan for Helensburg. That proposes the creation of up to 1,300 residential blocks south of the township and a 40 hectare light industrial zone. Concern about the plan is widespread, but for various reasons. To put 1,500 more home sites in, we'd like to know what the council are going to do uh, as far as our services here go. The whole area is very fragile and I, I really don't feel that it can take um, much more. I'm concerned that they should do something with the town itself, the present town, before they expand any further. I don't think there's enough people here at the moment. We don't get the facilities. Council aldermen, planning officers, the water board and the State Pollution Control Commission were all at the meeting, but not the state government. As I see, they're not taking a very close or active in interest in this at all. And that is a worry, given, as I said, that David Hay makes the final decision. He needs to be fully informed from day one. And conservationists, alarmed by what they see as a threat to the Royal National Park, also wants Macquarie Street to intervene. The middle path that we believe there is, is for the government to bite the bullet, the state government, and say there are alternatives to where urbanisation could take place. They include Menai West, they include... An independent report is claiming serious deficiencies in Wollongong Council's draft development plan for Helensburg, which is proposing more than a thousand new residential subdivisions for the township. The draft Helensburg plan is still far from becoming a concrete proposal. A series of seminars on the environmental impact of the plan got underway on Friday with discussions on the impact on water quality with an alliance of conservationists putting the council on the back foot with a report by three scientists saying its plans for protecting the Hacking River catchment are well wide of the mark. Around 6,000 individual submissions already received. The ambitious plan calls for the rezoning of 110 hectares of land to provide 1,300 new residential blocks with further provision for a 40 hectare light industrial estate. Most concern has centred on the impact development would have on Gills Creek and the sensitive Hacking River catchment. State Environment Minister Tim Moore says his government is well aware of those concerns. The state government wouldn't want anything to go ahead in Helensburg that wasn't going to improve water quality in the Hacking River. One of the point of putting the display out was to look at what, if anything, could be done in the Gills Creek and Camp Creek area that might as a side effect improve the downstream water quality in the Hacking River and we'll just have to await the assessment of the public submissions uh, on how that works out. During the past two months, Wollongong City Council has been swamped by public submissions 
and with dozens still pouring in daily, it's believed there could be a record number for a public exhibition. We're, the, actually the response has been above our expectations. We've got at the best estimate about 6,500 submissions in now, plus petitions. A number of key organisations yet to submit, but it is a very large and, uh, and good response to the exhibition of the draft plan. Most submissions oppose major housing growth at Helensburg. A final report isn't likely to go to council until February next year. A lot of those submissions raise quite complex issues. The whole plan issue is quite complex. So we've got a lot of work to do to respond uh, properly to council and do justice to the um, submissions that we've received. Happy is expressed by locals and green groups about the controversial Helensburg plan. Council's planning department will now make a decision on the proposal. The Department of Housing first put forward its plan for a major subdivision two years ago, when it met with a mixed response from Helensburg ratepayers and Wollongong City Council. The main sticking point was the size of the project and the issue of water pollution control. And despite changes including the use of a radical new wet pond system, some aldermen still aren't satisfied. The issues of water quality have yet to be debated by Council, yet uh, in this case um, the recommendation is that uh, the Council will, will approve the stormwater pollution, uh, pollution ponds and take over the maintenance of those after two years. Now that, that sets a precedent that, uh, that I believe is dangerous. Alderman Martin says in light of the Helensburg plan, some homeowners may accuse council of giving preferential treatment to the government. It seems to me rather strange that uh, weeks away from a major decision on, on the future expansion of, of Helensburg, uh, that the council would want to preempt that decision by approving a uh, hundred and three. And considering the desperate need for new housing to cope with Sydney's population boom beyond the year 2000. The proposal to allow more than 1,000 new home sites at Helensburg threatens to split the tight-knit community in two. A big public meeting recently heard arguments for and against growth in the town. Tonight, environmental groups will put their case by demonstrating potential damage to the Hacking River during a seminar at the community hall. But Planning Minister David Hay says quite simply Helensburg is now seen as one of the possible answers to Sydney's urgent housing needs into the next century. We've got the possibility or the real uh, expectation of a, an increase uh, in population of a million people within another generation and they have got to be housed. And he admits the pressure is mounting on his government to make a decision one way or the other on the future of Helensburg. A lot of pressure on the government, a lot of pressure on me as a Minister for Planning, a lot of pressure on Mr Ship, who's got the prime role of uh, ensuring that the growth of Sydney, which is inevitable, um, does uh, mean that people will be able to uh, acquire affordable housing. Uh, I've got two problems uh, in it, meeting the, the, the growing demand for housing and at the same time trying to rein in the urban sprawl that uh, we're seeing uh, Sydney subject to. Tonight's seminar starts at half past six. Jeremy Lassick, Windyburg Plan. After its rejection by a neighbouring local government this week, Sutherland Shire Council has called for public inquiry into the controversial plan, with fears the large-scale development could destroy the nearby Hacking River and National Park. The draft Helensburg plan has already proved to be a hot issue in Wollongong, with thousands of angry submissions flooding in weekly. Now it's threatening to produce a similar response in the neighbouring Sutherland area. The Shire Council has added its opposition to the plan, voting to seek an environmental impact statement if changes aren't made. With the engineers' reports that came out, I, I feel that they're only 80 or 90 per cent um, that they could give us an assurance uh, into the Hackney River and to the uh, National Park. And we believe that it's got to be a little bit better than that. In fact, it's got to be a damn lot better than that. The main sticking point for Sutherland Shire is the potentially harmful effect on the Hacking River and Royal National Park. But Wollongong City Council argues there's a great need for new residential and light industry sites outside Sydney. Lord Mayor Frank Arkell believes Sutherland councillors are putting the environment before people. I think they're being over, uh, overswayed. I think there's too many uh, people up there who have gone to the end of the I think there's a place on earth for people. However, Alderman Arkell says he can understand the concerns raised by his fellow local government officers. And Sutherland Shire itself is hoping to reach a compromise on the Helensburg plan. With the public inquiry, I'm sure everything will come out. 
and uh, it'll give everybody, you know, all the community, uh, the councils involved, uh, a chance to have input, the developers as well, and uh, hopefully we'll come up with a sensible, sane answer. The proposal would have eroded the Royal National Park and polluted the Hacking River. Developers will now ask the state government to overturn council's decision. Environmentalists and residents fill the council chambers for the final showdown on the Helensburg draft plan. After years of planning and vigorous debates, the alderman finally had to make a decision. ALP caucus leader Dave Campbell had plenty of support from the gallery as he moved to reject the plan. Alderman Alex Darling and Pat Franks held the key to the decision. They voted against the plan, their move dumping the Helensburg plan nine votes to six. Alderman Bill Barnettson was pleased with the solid vote. He claims contradictory reports on the plan led him to reject the proposal. The fact that there was serious doubt about some of the data, the base data, uh, there was differences, serious differences of opinion between uh, professional people and that sort of environment, uh, you have to act with caution, there is so much at stake. Others were disappointed with the outcome. I felt it was a very balanced report, it did uh, address all of the problems and I was prepared to accept uh, the judgment of the officers in that uh, their recommendation was that this minor development should take place. Helensburg environmentalists celebrated, claiming a victory for democracy. A toast for democracy and the lifeblood of the Hacking River. Yes. The real yes. Yes. I thought we would win. Uh, I thought the margin would be a little closer than what it was. It's a very, very pleasing result. I couldn't tell which way it was going and uh, I thought it'd be very close and it could have, we could have lost it, but things went well our way, actually. Residents claim they've saved a part of the Illawarra's heritage. I believe that Helensburg was worth fighting for. I believe not only for the, like, the people of Helensburg, but for the people of Australia and the people of the world. Helensburg landowners and developers supporting the plan will pressure the state government to reverse the decision. They're celebrating an environmental victory tonight. They've won a lengthy battle to stop a development which would have doubled the size of their tiny bushland suburb. For six years, environmentalists and concerned residents have battled a plan that would increase the Helensburg outer limits to include an extra 2,000 homes and light industry. But last night, the Wollongong Council shelved the plan in a vote of 9 to 6. I think it's a landmark win for common sense that future generations will look back and applaud what Wollongong City Council have done. In this environmentally sensitive area, pollution has already made its mark on the world's second oldest national park, which prompted the council to zone the former development sites as environmentally protected. Residents describe the vote as a major win for the environment. They believe had the development gone ahead, the Royal National Park and the Hacking River would have suffered irreversible damage. We would have seen one of our greatest national parks permanently degraded would have meant the loss of much of the aquatic life of that river because of pollution and other effects. The council and the residents believe the decision is a strong message to developers not to invest in environmentally sensitive areas. Jane Hanson, 10 Eyewitness News. Good evening. New South Wales Premier Nick Greiner says he won't override Wollongong City Council's decision to reject the controversial Helensburg plan. While conservationists have heralded the decision, some Helensburg residents, property owners and developers are calling for the debate to be resurrected at a state level. The public galleries were packed again last night. Groups from both sides travelled to hear the final word on development in Helensburg. Six years of planning hung in the balance as council debated the pros and cons for nearly an hour and a half. After accepting a motion seeking guidelines on pollution control, a 10-year upgrading of services for the area and making allowance for a 40% growth increase within the boundaries of the village, council rejected the Berg Plan 9-6. Very elated that after all this time it's finally come that common sense has prevailed and that the Alderman can see that a lot is at stake, not just Helensburg, but Australia's second oldest national park. This has been totally been on a green band influence on the Labor Party for their current elections coming up. Well obviously I'm delighted because there was so that the plan was riddled with problems, which is what we've been saying all along. Council says the decision to reject the plan, which would double the size of the village, was made because of the danger to the Hacking River and the Royal National Park. But developers and some aldermen claim the final decision was swayed by the September local government elections. But it's just a political decision. 
that's all it is. It, it's all about the upcoming state election. It's all about the for the you know, the coming uh, local government election. It's all about votes. I wasn't aware of the fact that Mr Carr actually runs the council. Very disappointed. In fact, Mr Proudfoot is calling on the Premier to buy into the debate. Our hope would be that that wouldn't be something the state government should step in on. It is essentially a decision for Wollongong Council. But that comment has also been swayed by imminent elections, according to Alderman Mowbray. He says last night's decision is not the final word on the plan, which has cost the community tens of thousands of dollars. At the present moment, we've got to get through the political nonsense of state election and local government elections. So it will be next year, probably, sometime. But it's there. It exists. Tara Brown wins. A massive show of support tonight for Wollongong Council's proposal to rezone more than 300 hectares of land around Helensburg to environment protection. In a bulk delivery, almost 5,000 submissions giving the plan the thumbs up have been presented to Council, but the future of the controversial area won't be decided for months. Helensburg Protection Society spokeswoman Jenny Donohoe strode into Wollongong Council this morning towing 4,111 submissions she hopes will save the area from excess development. A council officer and alderman Janice Quershaw officially received the paperwork. What will happen now is that the submissions will be considered and, and looked at by the council officers. Reports will be put forward to the alderman and hopefully the decision will be made early next year. The submission support Council's proposal to rezone 330 hectares of non-urban land to environment protection, a move which would further restrict development like the controversial 1,200 housing lot Lady Carrington Estate, but help protect sensitive areas of the Royal National Park. The Royal National Park is very much under threat if these areas um, are desecrated because the National Park will become an island. It'll cut off all the wildlife corridors to the catchment areas. They are in support of, of the rezoning proposal, but we have received um, submissions which are objecting to the proposal and all those issues have to be considered. ...areas around Helensburg to environmental protection. Each one of these people have been spoken to individually, whether it's been on our information stalls or whether it has been our door-knocking campaign, they are all very concerned regarding the Royal National Park. The protection ban won't stop urban expansion, but will highlight areas of natural significance and sensitivity. Well, the submissions will be considered by the council officers. Reports will be put together and the submissions be read by the aldermen. And a decision will be made, hopefully, early in the new year. Tracy Batchelor, Win News. Us. Hundreds of Helensburg landowners say they've been dealt a joker card by Wollongong City Council after its decision last night to put restrictions on their properties. Alderman voted to have all land catchments bounding the Royal National Park rezoned environmental protection. Residents claim that sterilised their properties from future development. The decision to place an environment protection zoning on land alongside the Royal National Park angered many of the hundreds of residents who turned out to a full council meeting overnight which saw many major disruptions. If you'll sit there and be quiet for a minute. If you'll sit there and be quiet for a, If you'll sit there and be quiet for a minute. Alderman Franks, shut up for a minute, please. <laughs> At least you didn't put your tongue out. What about the Australian tradition of a fair go? Yeah. But Labor aldermen felt residents had been given a fair go, claiming there'd been extensive consultation over the past 10 years. It was time, they said, to bite the bullet and make the difficult decision. Let me say, without fear, that many of the stories going round about who's pulling strings are nothing but malicious lies. And I'd like the people who are saying that to come out and say them in public where they can be tested. Talk about lies. I've heard some good ones, I've heard some more tonight. The one truth that's been said by both parties tonight is that the town is polarised and uh, um, it's unfortunate that the mediation that was recommended by the town planners and is supported by most people wasn't implemented by the council. During the discussion, Alderman revealed allegations of threats which they claim have been widespread throughout the past two weeks. I know of other aldermen, not just myself, who have been subject to incredible pressure 
from downright threats with a degree of sophistication, with promises of support, all to support a pro-development stance. I think he might just have a bit of a narrow mind. If he uh, has some fancy about threats being made to him, they're definitely a, a whim of his fancy. Pro-development landowners say they'll be lobbying State Minister for Planning Robert Webster to intervene, despite his comments to win television last week. As far as I'm concerned, as Minister for Planning, this is a local planning matter, one which should be dealt with by the uh, Wollongong City Council, and I won't be intervening. I believe at that time, he happened to be in Wollongong, he was not informed properly, and all he was told was a particular decision passed by the Planning Committee of Wollongong City Council. So I intend to supply uh, more information to Mr Webster. The environmentalists say they aren't even completely happy with the decision because Council has left the controversial Gills Creek land open for further consideration. There is some area left out that we were hoping would have gone into environment protection also because um, it's a tributary of the Hacking River. Despair tonight for more than a hundred Helensburg landowners as Wollongong Council pushes ahead with a controversial rezoning decision amid claims land values in the area will drop dramatically. There's been rowdy scenes and slanging matches in the council chamber as aldermen and residents clashed during the council's meeting. Labor Party alderman claims zoning land around Helensburg for environmental protection will win council praise from future generations. But independents say it's too much too soon. Opponents demanded a rezoning inquiry by the state government. Let's not hide. Let's bring things out in the open. Let's make sure they're debated in public. Landowners packing the public gallery claimed council's decision will make their properties worthless. But Aldman told them they'd been warned not to speculate. For several minutes, the meeting degenerated into a slanging match. Council has not changed its... Lord Mayor, I refuse to speak until you're caught in the gallery. Cat calls and cries of lies, lies crisscrossed the chamber. Sit there and be quiet for... If you'll sit there and be quiet for a minute... <laughs> Allegations of intimidation emerged as the debate continued. Alderman supporting environmental protection told council they'd received threats. Things could be made difficult for them if they didn't support the developer's application. People blatantly said they were representing some of the developers and the current proposals about Helensburg that we're talking about tonight and said in front of witnesses to me that it would be in my interest to support these developments because the applicant had significant resources. If I chose not to support the development, those same resources could be used against me. The rezoning decision went to the vote and was passed nine votes to six in favour of environmental protection. Outraged landowners continued their protest outside the chamber. It's very often in these chambers down here that the council would prefer people to shut up and say nothing rather than have honest and open debate. In the last two years we've had at least ten public meetings in one shape or other three or four times before council. You can't keep deferring, you've got to bite the bullet and tonight was bullet biting time. But that's cold comfort to the would-be developers. You can't use it and we're paying $387 a year rates for nothing. Council, through its own decisions, has virtually said, well, thank you, we'll have your land, and you get nothing back for it. But they received little sympathy from the environmentalists. They were speculators and they were warned about what they were buying. They bought rural bushland, and that's what they bought. They did not buy housing lots. Landowners have vowed to petition Planning Minister Robert Webster to overturn the decision.
there are speculators and they were warned about what they were buying. They bought rural bushland and that's what they bought. They did not buy housing lots. Landowners have vowed to petition Planning Minister Robert Webster to overturn the decision.